Hey, what's up everybody? This is Chris from PC Addicts. I have to say I'm fairly frustrated, but I think I figured everything out here. We're going to be configuring two machines. We're gonna configure a Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V Core Edition machine and a Windows 8 Pro machine here. Um, what we're gonna do is, they're not on a domain, so they're just in a work group environment, and we're gonna configure this Windows 8 Pro machine here to remotely manage that Windows Server 2012. Now I did put a video out, and you can watch it here if you want, um, a while back that I showed you some steps and I we got it to work, but it's kind of iffy, iffy. I think I messed up on one of the commands and it just it just wasn't very solid. But this time I think I got it down and hopefully this is gonna help you guys out. One quick thing before we get started, this is gonna be somewhat of a condensed tutorial where I'm not gonna go into depth um, I don't think on this one I'm going to have a lot of screenshots on, on the blog post. I'm going to have on the blog post there's going to be commands you can copy and paste and, and it's going to be just 12 steps. You can knock them out real quick and then get this thing remotely managed. But um, in the future I do plan on, on producing another one with some screenshots, a little bit more of a uh, maybe a beginner's guide. So this one's somewhat of a, I call it a, an advanced version. So let's get started. Okay. And we're gonna just do some of the basics here. It's gonna be fairly quick. So um, I typically like to delete all the partitions, start fresh and clean. And I'm gonna choose the smaller of the drives to put the OS on and let that go and install. When it's done, uh, go ahead and create your new user pass your administrator password. All right, this is our screen. Um, we're gonna go ahead and change the date and time. Make sure that's correct for Windows updates purposes. Okay, here we're, re we're enabling remote desktop and we're gonna select less secure. All right, here we're gonna configure remote management. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and um, create another local admin account. This one, make sure it's the same username and password as the one that you're using on your client machine. Okay, network settings, uh, I'm gonna switch it to static IP. Make sure it's on the same subnet as your home network or whatever your uh, host's network is. I'm using class C under a 10.2 address. I know it's not proper, but it works. Don't forget to set your DNS. In my case, it's gonna be the uh, router's LAN IP address. Okay, and uh, set our computer name up and go ahead and reboot. So let's remote desktop into that server, which is 10.2.0.88, that's, that's what I assigned it. I'm gonna log in as that local admin account that I set up, that's also the same uh, username and password as the account I'm using right now on this desktop. All right, so what I want to do right now is launch PowerShell because we're going to run some PowerShell commands. And so I'm going to switch over to the command window here. I'm going to type start PowerShell. I could just type PowerShell, but it'll bring it up in that command window and I'd prefer not to, so. All right, so here I'm going to go ahead and just run through the three, com uh, four commands real quick. You can follow along or check out the blog post and uh, it'll tell you exactly which one to run. Now it's important you guys make sure you use display group. So Windows uh, Remote Management. That's the first one. We're enabling that through the firewall. Now we're going to go ahead and up arrow. And the next one's going to be event log management. So remote or Windows. Actually, it's going to be remote event log management. And it's going to be remote volume management. All right, now we need to, there's a service, it's uh, it's named VDS, and that is not set to be uh, started when, it's, when Windows starts, but we need to set that. So we're gonna do set service uh, VDS startup type is going to be automatic. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and reboot the server. So I'm gonna switch back over here and number 12 is our option. So we'll just hit 12, restart. Now guys, we need to run 
PowerShell on the local client computer, the one I'm running right now. So I'm gonna do that next. Um, you can't see this on the screen, but I am right clicking on the PowerShell icon that I have pinned down to the desktop and I'm selecting run as administrator. So I'm running as administrator and now you can, you can make sure that I'm running as administrator or you too, as long as you have the, the account name up there administrator. So now we need to run the same exact or one of the commands that we ran earlier, the remote volume management so that we can remotely manage the volumes on that server. So we're going to do enable net firewall rule and display group and remote volume management. So this next step is we're going to edit the host file. I've noticed that with some of the management console things trying to remotely do things, it appears that it likes to be able to resolve the server via host name. So we're just going to add this entry into the, into the host table. I, I wish we didn't have to do this, but I mean, it's a work group environment. What are you going to do? So uh, we're going to go ahead and invoke an item. And it's going to be C Windows System 32 and then uh, drivers and then Etsy. So now that we're in here, we're going to right click the host file, and go properties, go security. We're going to add. We're going to do some, add my account that I'm using right now so I can edit this file we're gonna select modify we're gonna hit okay yes I'm okay with that then we're gonna right click we're gonna do open with and you can find notepad um, let's open a notepad too so here I'm just gonna add an entry it's gonna be 10.2.0.88 tab over so I'm gonna put in the host name here it's my VM server I'm gonna go ahead and save that control s and close this out and then I can change the permissions later. And that's it. So at this point, um, I'm going to go ahead and minimize PowerShell, bring this back over. And um, really, we're pretty much done on the server side of things and on the client side of things. So now I'm going to show you uh, real quick. I'm not going to show you how to do it, but I'm bringing up computer management on the other screen. I'm just going to show you that it, it's working now. So if I right click here, connect to another computer, type in there. Uh, either the IP address or now that we added the host file, the host table entry, we can do our host name. So for my VM server, All right, we get the storage. And before we would have had errors when we hit disk management. Now we have access to it, so we can create simple volumes and and do some other tasks in here. Not only that, I'm going to bring up Hyper V Manager uh, on the other screen here. And I'm gonna right click here, let's connect to server. We're gonna connect to either, you know, IP address or my, oops, uh, my VM. If I can type this morning, that's super early. Uh, VM server, there we go. And it connected, it says there's no more virtual machines found. That's a good sign that we have, uh, we have permissions here. We can, we can connect and create new hard disk, create virtual machines and whatnot. So, uh, 